Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori, and I've got a couple DIYs for you today. Um, these are Dollar Tree, super quick. I've got three plus one little bonus um, that I would share and get those up for you. I hope you enjoy, and yeah, you have a good day, and I will talk with you later. Bye. Let's get to crafting. The first hack DIY I have is not all Dollar Tree, but the can is from the Dollar Tree, or this vase. It was one of those um, galvanized buckets. And I bought some spray paint. This is cr uh, crinum, crium, crinium, copper, copper metal. And I took some pa uh, this painter's tape. More words today, girls' words. And I covered the twine ah, that I'm going to have to reattach. I don't have my glue gun out right this second, and that is okay. I'll get it out. But that was coming off before I started painting. I didn't know if I was going to need to rewrap this twine, but I don't think so. I'll s stick it. I'll get it glued back on there. But isn't that fun? I did a little bit into the top, not all the way. And then I'm gonna sit this with some, maybe some greenery or some cotton stems and potentially like on the floor in front of my fireplace. Like I have a taller one and then I could put that next to it. And that was it. And this spray paint gives it a really rustic feel too. So if you don't like that, you could go over it with like a clear coat. But that seriously took me two seconds. Next up, we're going to do a little painting and then we're going to switch up and come back to it while this paint dries. So I took one of these and you know the sparkly glitter, you know the drill. I pulled off the bow. I'm not keeping it. I took my hair dryer, heated this up and pulled off the sticker on the back. And then I took a putty knife and I just scraped off the glitter. It's very smooth. I'm gonna paint the back brown for one specific reason, and that is because I'm putting this in a tiered tray. And um, yeah, I may be able to see the back. So I'm gonna do some painting. And then I probably will change the color of the stem as well. I have this truffle paint, which I hope I have paint in here. <gasps> I don't, it's dry. Ah, that's the one thing about these paints, they do dry up. I'm going to see if I have any other brown paint, which I bet I do. So hold on one second. New plan. I will paint it pumpkin and go over it with mineral to highlight it. But again, um, that's fine. I was at Walmart. Okay, hello. I'm going to need you to open here. I was at Walmart today and I went looking for some more paint. Um, some more chalk paint and at my local Walmart the um, all of this Waverly chalk paint was wiped out crazy gone so that was a little irritating I did well I shouldn't say all I was able to get some ink in the black okay got a paintbrush I just want to cover this up. That's my main goal here. And also I hate this orange. So this is awesome because it's covering up that gross color that I didn't want. We'll do that later. Okay, next step. And these are all so easy. I didn't want to do a whole video for them. I found the words. So this one is family, and I got two of each, one for me and one I'm going to take to Sarah. And I just wanted to show you the family. I love this one. I cannot wait. This is going to get painted, and it's going to go on my wall with some family photos after I'm done painting my house. I'm painting the inside. We've got Boo. I'm not going to worry about Boo right now, so I'll put that over here. Now, we, I took the word gather, right, because that's where we're at. And what I did is I turned it over and I cut off the ropes on the back. I tried really hard to remove the staples, but that really wasn't going to happen. 
So we'll just pretend like they're not there. I did paint over it, so that's, oh, I'm sorry, I'm shaking the table. I also used sandpaper, I'm sorry, to get the glitter off of the pumpkin. <laughs> All right, so I removed the string and I painted this thing. And I painted it all white, including the edges. Everything got a coat of white paint. And then what I did, because I was trying to make this all Dollar Tree, now I used white chalk paint, you can use the white craft paint acrylic from the Dollar Tree. I took a copper pen, and I'm seeing here where I missed a spot. I took one of these pens, and I just colored, here's, that's how they come. I colored the whole outside to make, and I I tried on this side to see if I liked it outlined, and I didn't on the back. So I'm gonna go back and paint that white again. Um, but I love this. And then I just did the edges in copper. Now some of it, like the paint, it soaked in the marker. This edge is very porous, which is why I say you want to paint the edges. Even if you're going to go back and do a different color, like with a marker or a pen or something, or even paint, I would paint it white first. It's just as easy to paint it all white and go back and touch it up or paint it with the marker. But if you don't, you're going to go through several markers to, um, to color it in because it will soak up it'll soak up your paint. But do you love that? I love it. It's so simplistic, but that's what I like about it. It's true. And when I was at the store, I found some more, so I grabbed two more of the copper pens. Another item, if you see them, are these black paint pens, and we're gonna use that here in a second on our pumpkin. Let's see, are we dry? Yep, and that's the what I love about um, chalk paint. Now the top's not quite dry yet and the sides, but the back is dry. Um, again, that's what I love about chalk paint opposed to oopsies, acrylic. I just dropped my other paintbrush. Is it dries really fast. We are going to put this on here and let that set up. And then I'm going to come back with the mineral and I'm just gonna kind of dry brush over the top with the mineral to give it some texture and some depth and then we're gonna write hello pumpkin on the front all right and that's all I need to do and if it's not perfect that's really okay because think about it pumpkins are not just one color orange and what I'm doing here is I'm kind of just giving it the shape of a pumpkin. I really want to kind of get this rounded shape going. So I made it kind of two-tone color. I'm gonna stir up my mineral. That should be dry, and then we'll come back and put the highlights in. All right, I got my mineral all cleaned up. What I had to do is add a little water to it. This chalk paint will dry out, and what I have found is if you leave any paint on the outside here, It'll get stuck up in your lid and you won't get a good seal. It'll get air in there and it starts to dry up. So just make sure, I'm gonna go back and clean my pumpkin next, but just make sure you, if you get any paint on the outside, just take a wipe and clean it up before you put it away. Ooh, I did not want pink on there. That's okay, I want orange. It's okay. All right, so I'm gonna do some dry brushing around my pumpkin. So I'm gonna take some mineral out, put it on some paper here, and then pretty much dab most of it off. I'm gonna turn it this way. And what I'm trying to do, I'm not sure, maybe I'll bring it a little closer for this one. How's that? There we go. What I'm trying to do just kind of give it like some more dimension if you if that makes sense right like I'm tr doing it out here pretty thick right now and I'm just trying to lay in you know what would be the areas that our pumpkin is gonna go in this 
mineral color, which, like I said, is a very, very light gray. And then we're going to kind of go over it, blend it in. I, honestly, that's all I needed. Just that little tiny bit of paint. And then we're going to take, probably get some orange and go over it. Literally like a drop of orange. That's it. Drop of orange, dab it, and then just kind of, again, just trying to bury a little bit of the, these little techniques, honestly, take your little projects to the next level, I feel like. Just these little touches, little extra, that was nothing. But I gotta let it dry, and then I'll show you when we come back. And I think what I'm gonna do is also go over it with some wax. Um, maybe, we'll see. Right now, we're just gonna let everything dry completely, and then I'm gonna write, hello, pumpkin, on the front. Because I just feel like that would make it cute. I am buying a tiered tray. I've decided I've, I'm going to make the decision to go and actually buy a tiered tray. Instead of making them, I'm going to go buy a bigger one for my dining room table. I'm really, I think I've got the Corona cleaning bug or something or the Corona do my house over because I'm painting next weekend. So this today I've been spending most of my day pulling stuff off the walls, filling nail holes and doing all of that. My brother and my niece are going to come over next weekend, and they're going to help me um, clean up my house, paint it up. All right, the next what we're going to do is the books. Everybody is doing the books, and I, myself, love the books. Now, if you saw my haul video, you saw that I bought them. And what I did, it's just a regular old Dollar Tree book. I got three books that were the same size couple recommendations one if you can find white I would go with white I couldn't that's fine so originally I was just going to um, take some Dollar Tree white wrapping paper and create a book sleeve but when I did that I could see through it it's very thin paper so then I said, well, I'll just turn the book cover around which I can you may not be able to tell but I can see through it and that just bugged me so I'm doing a double layer, and all I did was lay out the book, measure it, and cut my paper. And the beauty with this Dollar Tree wrapping paper is it has the grids on the back. Now this is shiny, so if you're, if you're wanting something more matte, just go with the book itself and don't worry. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I'm going to be putting stuff on top of it, but I didn't want to see the writing through. So there's my book. Nothing is being damaged. I'm not tearing it apart. I'm just utilizing here. Then what I did is I picked up these rub-on transfer letters. Now these are in the Crafter Square section. They also have stickers. You just want to look up here. This is a rub-on transfer. Some say stickers. Um, this one sheet came with, it doesn't say how many stickers. But I ended up buying three sheets because I wasn't going to stand there and spell out my words and I wasn't even sure what my words are and I might be doing other things, but I bought three sheets so they all matched font. I like this font. I had enough in one sheet to do thankful, grateful, blessed, and I have leftover letters, which is pretty awesome. So after I laid out my books and I got all the book covers taken care of, what I did is I went through and cut out the letters that I'm going to need individually. Don't try to deal with all of this without cutting your letters because you'll see here in a second. And then we're going to work on, oops, got a little moisture going on up here. Hold on. My, my iced coffee is sweating, so I'm going to get it out of my way. That's crazy. I'll put it on the ground. I just got a little water. It's fine. So my books, make sure they're all lined up. 
This is so easy, but this is what I'm going to tell you. I lay my word out, right, and spell it exactly how I want it spelled. And these little things, you know, B-L-E-S-S-E-D, blessed, right? That's the last word I'm doing. So I need my D. When you take it off the paper, it just lifts up. It is a rub-on transfer. It's clear, so you can see through it. So I decide how far from the end. But what I'm gonna do, because I've already done thankful and grateful, I'm gonna line up my books, right? And then I'm gonna put my D so it lines up with the top word. And that's how I know everybody's where it needs to go. Um, I will tell you that this is shiny. Oop. Yeah. Okay, it's shiny. So you really want to rub it good, this paper. And just lift it off. It is literally that easy. And then you start at this end and go backwards. If, that's, if you want them all to line up on this end. You could do it in the middle. You could start on this end and do... Start with the first letter. I wanted them to be lined up on this end. So we're going to continue on here. And then I just try my darndest. I'm gonna have to turn it sideways here, guys, so I can see. To line everybody up. If they're not, it's okay. And part of the reason I liked this font, it kind of looks handwritten to me. The bead. Okay. There we go. Done. Now, when I style it, and you could do grateful, thankful, blessed, blessed, grateful, it doesn't matter. I'm going to lay mine this way. And then what I'm going to do, you could take lace. You could take colored twine. I'm gonna take good old, plain old white twine. And I wanna go around all three books with it, right? Cause that's just how I roll. And I wanna go a couple times. Give it a pretty thick, substantial look. And then I'll put a candle on top of it or something. <gasps> Maybe my squirrel that I bought. All right, I don't have any scissors right here, but all right. And then I'm at the front or the top of the book and I'm just gonna tie it off up top. Like it's very old fashioned. I think back in the, you know, Little House on the Prairie days, this is how they would carry their books. Tied together with a strap of some sort. You could put a bow, you don't have to. I'm just gonna leave it like that. But that is how the end oops, uh, will look. And then I will, just like that. I'll fuss with it and then it'll have something sitting on top of it. How fun, oops, how fun is that? So that's our second finished item here. Is that second? Yes. Third? I don't even know. We got the books. Oh, we've got our tin, our copper, because you know I'm obsessed. Oh, our grateful sign, our gratitude, yeah, gather sign. And now we're gonna do this. I am sorry that I have to turn it upside down for you to watch, but I need to be able to write it the right way. This is from the Dollar Tree. When you start one of these pens, because this is a new one, um, you just turn it over, right? I'm gonna do this in black. I don't know, should I do it in copper? What do you think, guys? <gasps> Let's do it in copper. I don't know. Okay, let's do it in copper. If I do it in copper and I don't like it, I can always do it over in black, right? 
Right, okay. So I'm just gonna write hello. And I really want this to be rustic. So we got our hello. I don't know if that's dark enough. I'm gonna have to do it in black. Well, that made me sad. But like I said, the beauty is I can just go over it in the black, right? Yeah, that looks better. And then we're gonna write pumpkin. That's it, hello pumpkin. How rustic, that's how I wanted it. Nice and handwritten. And then from the Dollar Tree, I did find these berries. So we are going, oh, I need to get this up out of here. Here's the other end. I don't need a whole lot of this and I don't even want to take it apart. I wanna leave it on its tag. And then take a marker, a pen, a pencil. I'm gonna twirl it around. I'm sure you've seen this a thousand times on different channels. I'm gonna pull it off, open it up, and then I'm gonna go about the halfway mark, which I think should be right about here. Just gonna wrap it around the pumpkin. There you go. And if you'd rather use um, stickers, you can. Um, there's a hundred different things you can do. I just really wanted to write it. And look at that, isn't that super fun? If you want to hot glue that down, you can. I don't feel like it's necessary, only because it's just going to sit in a tray. Um, but yeah, and that's our last project. So I hope you enjoyed.